Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, beautiful day out, just absolutely beautiful. Breezy, cool, uh, low humidity, just absolutely wonderful. Now, I'm kind of trapped in my house because I had my sidewalk done. You can probably see it in the back. Uh, had my sidewalk done so I can't drive over it for a week. And uh, if you look here, you can see the sky with the puffy clouds. It's just amazing, huh? What a day. Um, so uh, let's go downstairs. We got a lot to do. It's Mishmash Monday, and uh, we'll see what we can conjure Okay, up. we are back in the shop where we love to be. Uh, first off, we, while we start this episode, I want to uh, just briefly talk about those HKP cutters, the portable cutters we did on Friday. Uh, I was suffering from a small bout of cerebral flatulence. And uh, what had happened was I reversed the, yes, and H. McNally was the first one to notice it, but I reversed the, uh, the, the stud on the bottom, and uh, you know that there's a left-handed, right-handed thread. It was 2 in the morning. I was trying to get it done so I can get that video up, and uh, you know, I had to, it can only go on one way. So needless to say, it's back the way it should be. With the right stud here on the uh, right side, the left stud on the left side, and it operates now. The, it didn't make a difference, except the only thing is that you would notice is when you would pull, when you would loosen it to the left, it would open the jaws. And now it uh, it does it the right way. When you uh, turn it to the right, it closes the jaws. Anyway, that's the way it should be. And uh, I apologize for that. Uh, next up, I have something that's pretty interesting. Do you remember these? If you do, then you're you're old as I am, maybe, or <laughs> or you have to be over 40 years old if you remember these. These are uh, roller skates from the old days, and uh, they had metal wheels. And you could tell when people were roller skating with these because these things made a racket. But they were pretty interesting. They would uh, clip onto this one had uh, clip onto your heel, and then this you would use a skate key, which um, would screw this in or out and close it around the front of your shoe. Remember, this is before sneakers, and uh, and then you would tighten it up for your size, so they were adjustable. And um, they had leather straps. They're long gone, except for this one still has one. A leather strap would go around your ankle to keep it on, and they were pretty amazing, you know. And and uh, I restored a couple of these, but this is for a different project. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad made me a, a scooter. Because he was uh, old school from Astoria, New York, and he's like, he, I was the only kid that ever had a scooter, a, a soapbox scooter. I don't know if you ever saw it. I'll show okay, you this was your basic crate scooter, and it was either an apple crate or a milk crate or an orange crate, and it was nailed to a 2x4 that had a, two, a, a roller skate split in half on each end, and they were real big in the 40s. Okay, next up, you remember this? This was attached to the bolt cutter. This is an SK model 45 153 breaker bar three-eighths of an inch and um eric s had uh wondered he says man i would have liked to seen that restored so you know it's a real quick one let's get it done and i want to tell you quickly how to lubricate and look after these detent balls Here we are in our post wire brush evaluation. Looks good there, right? But then you look over here, watch the knurling. Ouch. Oh, doesn't that kill you? We love knurling. And when you see it, you know, mangled up like that or banged up, it's like, you know, that, that takes away and it's in all different spots. There's nothing you can do. Or is there? Maybe we could run it through uh, the knurler on the lathe and see if that'll clean, you know, make new knurls. I don't know. I'm going to try it, but see the problem, just so you know, the problem is that these wrenches are hardened after the knurling's done. And so it's, it's, you know, it's going to be hard to put new knurls in. I'm going to try it. What can we got? We got nothing. Okay. Now because of the head, we can't put this into the, chuck this into the lathe. So we're going to have to figure out a way to do this. Now, years ago, I bought this set. This is called a hand knurling set. And what it is, it's a, uh, Looks like basically uh, like almost like a pipe cutter, you know, that you would put here and it has knurling wheels and you would do it by hand, what you would normally do on the lathe. It's got a little uh, threaded portion on top here that you can put this bar in to give you leverage so that you could turn it around. Uh, tell you the truth, I, I don't think I've had much luck with these, but uh, let's give it a try. You know, it's uh, it, especially since we're trying to go over already knurled part. I can't see this really working out, but now we'll give it a shot. to hold this in the vise because it's round. I just took a piece of scrap wood, drilled a, a half inch hole through the middle, and then I cut it with the saw down the middle. 
making it like this so that I could put it in here and then squeeze that in and that'll hold this in the vise from slipping. Okay, you know, we addressed that knurling and, and you could still see a little bit where it was, but I'll tell you, I think it worked. And uh, as you could see here, there's the factory finish over here. And there's the uh, Scoutcrafter finish that uh, the first step. So you could see the difference here. If you look real close, right, it does look better when you, uh, when you grind it out. To keep your ball re detent in uh, good operating condition, especially if it's frozen, uh, if it's frozen, you want to use a penetrating oil, but this one seems to be fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to place it on a block of wood here that's supporting over here. And then I'm going to use a regular 3-in-1 oil because uh, this one is, is in good shape. I'm going to put a drop right on top of it. And then taking a flat blade of a screwdriver, just press down like this until the oil is absorbed into the, the ball. You see how it goes down? There you go. And just back and forth a couple times, then wipe it off with a piece of paper towel, and that'll keep that nice and oiled up. Now you know my favorite part. You remember what this breaker bar looked like before we started. Okay, uh, we're calling this done. And, you know, SK was always known for their uh, premier chromium plating, but. Uh, you know, here we had to, because it was uh, rusted, we had to take it down a little bit, but it looks really nice. And, uh, you know, everything works really well. It's nice and smooth because it's now oiled and everything. Look at the butt cap, huh? I love how these come out when you do these upright. It looks like brand new. And as for the knurling, uh, you know something? I'll tell you, it's not as noticeable as before. I think it worked. I'm happy with it, and uh, I'm going to call this one finished. So let's see what else we now, got. Now, this part isn't really too related, but it's uh, I find it interesting as heck. And I have to tell you, you know, when I was a scout leader, I had to come up with things that would keep the boys interested and keep them coming back. <laughs> and I also had to do things that uh, they could learn something without knowing they're learning something. So uh, this way they were getting something out of the program. So let me show you this. I thought this was really cool. It's called Euler's Disc. Okay. Joseph Bendick um, worked for Hughes Aircraft about 1987 to 1990. He's uh, messing around and he comes up with this little disc and it. And what it is, it's a regular steel disc. It's slightly curved on one side, has a little sharp edge on the other. And um, he's spinning it on his desk and everything. And he says, wow, this thing really has some uh, uh, vibrating or harmonic qualities. And he was showing his friends and they said, wow, that, that thing could really sell. So he comes up with this kit and he makes this kit. And uh, by 1998, they, they actually uh, get a patent for this as, a, uh, as kind of a toy, you know. And what it is, it's that steel disc, and then he also put in some, you know, some magnetic uh, uh, colored, you know, prismatic uh, devices that you could put on there. And by putting this on here and spinning the disc like this, it's magnetic. So you put this on here, you spin the disc, and then the color, it's it's really amazing. So let me show you how it works. This is a, a slightly uh, concave mirror so that, that it keeps it uh, more or less in the middle. I got this leveled out. And I'll give you a quick demo. Okay, so all you had to do is basically give it a, a slight spin. And then I would have the scouts bet on how long it will spin. And it's pretty interesting.
Oh, my favorite part is always at the end. Anyway, I'll spin it again at the end of the video, but I always thought this was such a cool toy. Hey, lastly, huh? I have a really cool tool that I don't think maybe you've seen before, but uh, it's pretty pretty interesting. Let's check now, it out. Now, anytime you want to do any layout work where you have to drill an accurate hole, you would uh, put down this uh, layout die, and uh, it's called a Dicom is the... Uh, is the company that's known. Usually it's blue, but of course I have to have it in red. And uh, you put down this die, and then what you would do is to, uh, to mark out your uh, lines. You could take your uh, your calipers and run across the edge and make a scribe going back and forth until you have a, uh, a crosshair where you have to exactly drill the hole. And then what you would do is you take a punch, a very fine punch, and the best way to do it is to very carefully put the punch in the line and the drag it down until you feel the cross section and you have to have a good feel for this and when you're exactly in the middle then you tap it with your brass hammer put a small punch, a little small hole in there a little dimple and see where it is and make sure it's ex exactly in the middle if it's not in the middle then you have to take your punch and you have to kind of you know uh massage it one way or the other the dimple to get it exactly in the middle and when you do you hit it with a deeper punch and then drill your hole, okay? That was, uh, and that, but suppose you have an area that's all finished. You can't put any scribe lines on. Let's say you can only put that little dot. You see that little dot, how small that is? How would you uh, get the punch on there? You can't even feel it. I have a tool. This just tool that. is called an optical center punch. And uh, it's made in the USA. And it's really cool. And this is one of those things that's... Uh, I have really no need for it because <laughs> I'm not that precise, but I just wanted it because it's so cool. Let me show you how it works and, and what it's, uh, it's basically a machine uh, piece of, I guess it's like a Delrin and it has an optical viewer and a punch and there's two holes. And what you do is um, you take the punch out here and you put on the side and you take your piece here. And we're going to put this over here, and you're going to look through the top here. Okay, please excuse the shakiness, but I can't use a tripod for that. You see the indicator mark? That's where you want to put the uh, punch dimple in there. Now, I have this punch here just so you can see for reference, but we're going to slide the optical punch over here, and we're going to look through. Now, I'm going to have to tap this so that it focuses in, and hopefully it'll focus in on that black bullseye. There's a bullseye at the bottom of the hole there. You see it there? Now we're going to move that over there, and that goes right over, and if you could see that uh, bullseye, there we go, it's focused there. And you see that? I want to put that dot right over the red, and then what you do is hold it down tight and pull up the optical viewer and replace it with the punch like this, and just give it a quick tap on top. Just a light tap like that, and then we'll take a look and, and see where that dimple is. Okay, now if we look real close, you could see that we made a dimple exactly on that little red dot. And that's because this is good to like, uh, I don't know, like a half a thousandths or something accuracy. It's what a cool tool, huh? Okay, so in closing, I hope you enjoyed today's mosh. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.